Power supplies and cable management. Let's get started. What's up guys, I think we're in the home stretch here. This is part five of my upgrade series. Uh, so below that like button in the description, you're gonna find a playlist that's got uh, all of the videos that are part of the series. Uh, in this video, we're gonna be installing the power supply and doing some cable management so we can wrap up the build. This is a Corsair HX850. Uh, this came out of my previous build and uh, it's a really great, really solid power supply. Um, seven year warranty, and I knew when I bought it originally that I was going to use it in this build as well. Um, anyways, uh, it's semi-modular, so you've got uh, plugs there for your modular cables, uh, but you do have some built-in cables, but these are going to be ones that we need anyways. So you've got your 24-pin power, a couple of uh, PCIe cables, and then a 8-pin uh, uh, power adapter. In fact, um, outside of these, the only other things that we're going to need are the uh, SATA power for the drives and uh, for the Corsair Link and for the uh, Blu-ray drive and I think that'll just about do it. Power supply installation is really straightforward. It's just uh, positioning the supply, four screws on the back uh, and in the Corsair 600T case that I'm using uh, there's actually a little backing plate that's adjustable uh, that will uh, keep the back of this unit in place. Now um, for me I'm installing with the fan down uh, because I have a filter on the bottom here that will uh, allow uh, airflow uh, from underneath through the power supply and out the back so we're not running hot uh, case air through the power supply. Now what we're left with is a bunch of cables and we're going to be making use of the uh, really nice cable management through all these grommets uh, to make this look nice and tidy. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of time, uh, but uh, I actually would rather take the time here to make this uh, look good, but the advantage of doing that is that it's going to um, make airflow a lot better in the case, and that's going to be really good because you want things to stay cool. So after a little bit of time and a lot of zip ties, I do have everything in place here on the back. It looks pretty messy, uh, but it does serve its purpose. So it does fit behind the back panel once it's on, and it stays out of the way. Uh, nothing's bulging, uh, at least on the back panel, and everything looks uh, really great, at least from the front. Here's the front of the case. It looks a hell of a lot better than the back. Uh, the red and the black color scheme, I think, just looks really, really great. Um, so I have everything plugged in, and uh, overall, I think it's just a nice-looking setup. Now, I have some uh, stray SSD cables that are not plugged in, and that's on purpose, because I don't want to do that until after I have uh, Windows installed. Uh, and then once I've completed that, then I'll go ahead and plug those in and configure them properly. Now, I really can't do much about the blue power supply, uh, or at least the blue um, you know, color that's on the power supply. But that's all right. That gets covered by the side panel. And the only thing that you really will be able to see is the uh, top part there. So overall, I think that's going to wrap it up for this part of the video. Uh, I probably have one more part to go. Uh, it'll just be a general overview of the entire build. Um, now that I think I'm sort of complete. Uh, so definitely like and subscribe, that's gonna help me out a ton. And uh, again, check out the description below for the playlist um, for the entire build series so you can check that whole thing out. And uh, like I said, that's gonna wrap it up for us today, guys. Thanks for watching, see you next time.